Hello friends. Now I would like to explain you the normal metabolism and normal synthesis secretion and metabolism of thyroid hormones. Basically now I am dealing with pharmacology. Uh, before knowing about the drugs which are used in thyroid disorders, it is uh, a prerequisite for you to know about the normal thyroid mechanism. I hope today I would deal with normal thyroid synthesis secretion and metabolism and uh, tomorrow I would deal with the drugs which are used in hyperthyroidism and hypothyroidism and any other disorders of thyroid gland. So, thyroid is one of the important endocrine gland in our body because it governs all the metabolic processes which take part in our body. So, mainly what hormones are synthesized by the thyroid gland? As you might be reading from your childhood, thyroid synthesizes thyroxine, triiodothyronin, reverse triiodothyronin and calcitonin. So, how does this uh, uh, is synthesized? I mean, how does uh, the thyroid hormone synthesize these enzymes? For this, adding is the most important uh, product which is required for the production of thyroid. thyroid I mean, thyroid hormones. Um, so, there are mainly some steps which are involved in the synthesis of thyroid hormone. One is iodide trapping. Next, conversion of iodide to iodine. Next, thyroglobulin synthesis. Next, coupling reaction, proteolysis of thyroglobulin and secretion of thyroid hormones. So, let us start with the first reaction uh, through a small diagram. I always like to represent these in the diagrammatic representation rather than rawly saying the process. So this is a follicular cell in the thyroid follicle. I hope you are, yes, you are able to see it, right? So this is follicular cell. And hope this has bled and take this has colloid. I hope you are able to understand what I mean. This is the colloid matrix, this is follicular cell and this is blood. So, in the blood, as I said, iodine is the prerequisite. So, iodine from the blood, it enters the thyroid gland by, I mean, it had to enters the follicular cell by active mechanisms. So, active transport of iodine from circulation into the colloid occurs by iodine pump which is present between I mean on the follicular cell so this iodine pump is a secondary sodium potassium sodium iodine importer that is it allows iodine inside along with sodium so this is sodium iodine Symporter. Right? This sodium iodine symporter or co transporter, this causes accumulation of this iodine in the thyroid cell, that is, follicular cell. Sodium which it has entered into the cell, we don't need sodium here. So, this sodium is pumped back by sodium potassium ATPase. Sodium potassium ATPs. So this iodine is trapped by this sodium iodine symporter. So this iodine, this is not an iodine form, this is an iodide form. I minus is iodide form. This iodide form should be converted to iodine. For this to convert it into iodine, it should enter the colloid. So this iodide enters the colloid and in the colloid it is converted to iodine by the enzyme thyroid peroxidase. 
this thyroid peroxidase is present only in colloid so uh, entry of iodine from the follicular cell into the colloid is a prerequisite for uh, conversion of iodide to iodine this iodine right now is uh, useful for the synthesis of thyroid hormones so the second part of this reaction um, of, of uh, uh, sec, uh, synthesis occurs is thyroglobulin thyroglobulin is also an important uh, part which is required for the synthesis i mean in the um, synthesis of thyroid hormone so thyroglobulin is basically a glycoprotein as it is a protein it is first synthesized in endoplasmic reticulum in the follicular cell and from this endoplasmic reticulum this protein is released and it is packaged in golgi apparatus and from the golgi apparatus this thyroglobulin is released to the external exterior right it is exocytosis this thyroglobulin is exocytosed so this thyroglobulin secretion is activated or facilitated by thyroid peroxidase right uh, right now even both iodine and thyroglobulin are seen in the colloid so this iodine combines with thyroglobulin and forms uh colloid granule this colloid granule contains mono iodide thyrodine and di iodide thyrodine tyrosine sorry mono iodide tyrosine and di iodide tyrosine right so this thyroglobulin mainly contains a tyrosine molecule right thyroglobulin it contains tyrosine molecule this tyrosine molecule to this tyrosine molecule if one iodine binds then it forms mono iodo tyrosine if two iodine binds then it is called as a uh, di iodo tyrosine tyrosine so this mono iodo tyrosine and di iodo tyrosine these are formed as a colloid granule right so this is thyroglobulin and for this iodine is attached and this leads to diiodo tyrosine and if only one iodine is attached then it is mono iodo tyrosine so this colloid granule this is endocytosed into the cell into the follicular cell because this thyroid globulin should form i mean should reach the blood right now so it is endocytosed and this undergoes lysis right this part undergoes lysis and coupling so first there will be a coupling reaction so in the coupling reaction two diiodo tyrosine forms t4 and one mono iodo tyrosine and diiodo tyrosine forms t3 so t3 and t4 are formed by this coupling reaction which occurs here so the formed t3 and t4 are excreted outside exocytosed into the blood majority of the uh, thyroid hormone will be in t4 form and minority will be in t3 t4 is an active form whereas t3 is the activated form so whenever we need uh, activation t4 will be converted to t3 whenever the hormone is needed so through this the uh, thy both triiodo tyrosine um, tri uh, thyroxine and tetrathyroxine that is t3 and t4 both of them are released into the blood so that it is utilized this is the synthesis of thyroid hormones bye